It's so interesting that you say that because in situations that I know personally of situations with people who are in relationships that are troubling from the outside, there's a lot of judgment. Mm -hmm. You know, people are like, well, you know, there's so much shaming of people who stay in those relationships. Well, why don't they just leave? I mean, it's their choice. They, they should leave. So, you know, my main question about those people who are bystanders, as I call them, on the outside yes. is, you know, what would that kind of relationship look like to them? I think you've explained that really well, but what kind of advice would you give to people on the outside of this situation who are aware of it, but are afraid, frankly, to right. address it? Sometimes I find people make a joke out of it or they make it yeah. entertainment. Um, and, and I also think that that has a terrible impact on someone who's kind of in that situation because there seems to be this level of shame and of guilt and embarrassment. So what would you say to people who are on the outskirts of this, watching this happen, watching this dynamic play out? What kind of advice would you give them to start gingerly and gently allowing that person or those people in that relationship to know that you know, you're present for them and you want them to have a place to, to land and come to feel safe when they're trying to sort all of this out? So, so I think you've, you've identified most of it, which is generally supportively and um, do that. There are a couple of things that you touched on also that is really important to me that unintentionally, sometimes we shame that person. That would never happen to me. I don't know why you put up with this. Or you know all of those things, particularly particularly in our community. Let's be honest. Right. Um, and and I heard it many times. Um, but also, um, there, in order to quit shaming, you need to understand the dynamics of domestic violence. So, if I understand that there is something that's going on with April and my my uh, spidey senses are going off, I'm going to go to NZDB's website or some website or something like that and find out about domestic violence, then I would say that um, be very careful for your own safety, but also understand that if you're feeling that, what must that person be feeling? And then very supportively and very gingerly say, I always say this, I know something is going on for you. Don't identify it because sometimes they don't even know that this is domestic violence, but I know something's going on for you. When and if you're ready to talk, I am here for you. And then make sure you have the resources available yourself to be able to share with that person, whether it's the National Domestic Violence Hotline or um, the local program that provides services or whatever it might be somebody that you know is an advocate that can, can guide that person and say, um, and be willing to know that once you say, I'm, I'm here for you and I want to, I'm making myself available to hear from you, that you'll probably and may not get the response you want. They may say, what are you talking about? You know, because it's, it's, it's embarrassing. You know, we don't want it to be, but it is. And so it may take a couple of times of saying that before they get comfortable to do that. So be prepared for the response. Be prepared to provide something to that person when and if they reveal that. Do not, do not say, why don't you leave? <laughs> uh, the survivor has the right and is the only one that can make that decision for their own safety and for their children's safety, and particularly when there's children 